All right, thanks for coming out. Uh, excited to get into SEC play this Saturday over in Athens. Uh, again, want to thank our fans for what a uh, awesome atmosphere that was Saturday night in Williams Bryce. Uh, sellout, cockpit was rocking, and uh, even talking to more recruits on Sunday and Monday. Uh, the feedback from them was fantastic. So certainly thank our fan base for that. It was uh, an outstanding night and and uh, um, really fun environment as well. Uh, big challenge this week as we open up SEC play. Uh, everyone, everyone knows or should know the, the respect I have for Kirby Smart and uh, his coaching staff and the way they do things. Uh, had a fantastic two years <clears throat> as an assistant coach in Athens working for Kirby. Learned a lot. He made me a better coach. Uh, in my two years in Athens. Obviously, we know they have great talent and great players, but they're so well coached uh, as well in all three phases. Uh, offensively, you know, I mean, there's so many weapons when you turn on the tape. Uh, quarterback is is uh, playing really, really well. He can make all the throws. Offensive line is uh, massive, you know, two probably first round draft picks uh, starting on the offensive line at least right now. Um, running back cores, I know they're a little banged up, but they're deep and, and uh, they come in waves. And then uh, Brock Bowers, what he does speaks for itself as a player. Uh, the receivers, they've got weapons on the perimeter. They've gotten two transfers that have come in from Mississippi State and Missouri that have helped them as well. So they're extremely uh, explosive on offense. Defensively, what you would expect. Uh, uh, physical fly around. The whole team plays with great effort. Uh, really dominant up front. You know, 13's a, a future first round draft pick, and and uh, the linebackers have played a lot of football for them. They got size and athleticism in the secondary. And then you know, people talk about our special teams here, and rightfully so. But they're dynamic on special teams. Um, you know, they returned a punt for a touchdown last week. They use great players on their special teams from being there for two years. I know how involved Kirby is with the special teams, and, and it shows. Uh, that'll be a big challenge for us on Saturday to make momentum plays uh, in the kicking game as well, which is easier said than done against those guys also. But looking forward to it. We know it's going to be a, a rocking environment. First uh, CBS 330 game we've had since I've been the head coach here. So it'll be exciting. That means you're doing something right when you're playing in those games for sure. And uh, hopefully that's, uh, I guess it won't be the first of many with the TV contract changing. But um, if it was continuing, it'd be the first of many. But many uh, primetime games with college game day like we had for the first game and then a national television CBS 330 game uh, as well. Uh, testament to what we're doing here in our program and obviously Georgia's program as well. Uh, if you got specific questions about guys, I'll answer them. But, but I'll tell you the same thing I told you Sunday night. Everybody's questionable. So pretty much anybody you're going to ask me about is uh, questionable. They all practiced today for the, or, or did a little bit in practice, practice except uh, Marion Brown. But uh, we expect A.B. to do some stuff tomorrow, and we'll see how everybody progresses throughout the week. Questions? Shane, you mentioned, I mean, the number one ranking, Georgia. You've got a few guys that have been in this atmosphere before. Do you find yourself having to tell anybody on the team about, like, you got to be prepared for this atmosphere? Or do they pretty much already know what they're going to be walking into? I would hope they know. Um, you know, I mean, a lot of these guys all on our team were highly recruited guys and maybe went to a game as a recruit at Georgia or they came here or they went to other SEC games. So it's like I told them this morning, I mean, this would be a rocking – environment. Uh, when we go to Knoxville in a few weeks, it'll be a rocking environment. Uh, when we go to A&M and where else do we go? Missouri this year. I mean, it's the SEC. And uh, if you don't want to play in front of 90, 100,000 seat fans, you should have gone and played in another conference. Uh, we don't go and play in front of stadiums where there's 20, 30,000 people in the stands for a conference game. It's This is the SEC. So, I, you know, our guys uh, should embrace that. We know it'll be a big challenge. It was extremely uh, difficult to communicate over there a couple of years ago. We know how loud it'll be, and and but I want our guys to um, embrace it as well. Um, you know, we uh, we uh, uh, went to Clemson last year, and that was a you know hostile environment, and and we played with poise and get off to a great start, but played with poise, and and uh, it'll be the first time for a lot of these guys in an atmosphere like this. So it'll be a challenge as well. You try and educate them, but again, with us, it's we need to worry about what we can control and that's going to play well.
On that note, the two SEC road wins you've managed so far, you jumped out to quick leads in those games. Just how important is it going to be to have these guys ready right out of the gate in this one? Yeah, it's, um, you know, it's critical. Um, we've certainly had some games where we didn't get off to a good start on the road, to say the least, and, and it'll be uh, critical for us as well. Everybody talks about starting fast, and, and that's easier said than done against these guys, against anybody when you play on the road. It's tough. Uh, we know it'll be loud and, and hostile, but we need to make sure that what we're doing from a call standpoint, offensively, defensively, and special teams is giving our guys the best chance to, to be successful early in the game and uh, you know try and do our best to, to, uh, to settle in and, and get better as the game goes, you know, without a doubt. Um, with Spencer and just how much his accuracy is up from last year, for you, just what do you kind of attribute that to in terms of like how much of that is mechanical versus how much is just like mental decision making that's changed from last year? Yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, a combination of things. Uh, I don't necessarily would say that he was inaccurate last year. I mean, there were some throws. If you look at his completion percentage, you say it's up. But he also he had some drops last year. I mean, I can remember drops in the Georgia game. I can remember a couple drops in the South Carolina State or Charlotte game. So he had some drops. But he's certainly playing well. I think, one, you give him a lot of credit with how he's uh, improved and, and gotten better over the last year. Uh, the, the relationship with he and Dow has certainly uh, really been good. The relationship that those two guys have and Dow maybe helping him with some mechanical things from that standpoint. Schematically, what we're doing, he has a great understanding of, of what we're doing uh, offensively. You know, I mean, I won't say that we're running the same concepts over and over and over again, but we don't have like this whole just library of stuff where he's not real sure to go with the ball. His decision making is good and therefore his accuracy is going to be good. And and uh, we know the level of competition is going to continue to go up, you know, starting this week as well. But he's in a he's in a good place right now. And uh, it's a combination of him, Dow, but then also the people around him also. Uh, you know, when you're throwing the ball accurately, uh, excuse me, accurately, um, your receivers are getting open and they're where they're supposed to be. And your running backs are where they're supposed to be and tight ends and protection and all that. So it's everybody being on the same page. And then because of that, you know, I think the quarterback's accuracy and the quarterback's play is going to be better too. For guys like Nick and A.B. who have a hamstring injury, for example, how tough is it for them to, I guess, try to manage things and, and treat it and, and not try to rush back since those injuries are kind of, you know, yeah, no, it. you're right. Um, you know, you want to, those are things that can linger throughout the season if you don't uh, let them, you know, heal the right way and you don't want to rush things for sure. Uh, but we're smart with it, you know, Clint and down in the training room and, and our strength and conditioning staff, you know, ramping him up and, and trying to do what he can do each and every day. And I told him before practice, like he practiced today and, uh, and looked good <clears throat> out there in practice. Uh, I thought, you know, he didn't do everything, but he was limited, but looked good. And it's like I told him at the beginning of practice, you know, you're practicing today and you're doing a little bit today and you'll do a little bit more tomorrow and a little bit more on Thursday and Friday walk through or jog through and we'll be ready to go on Saturday. So, uh, you know, trust uh, trust the, the medical personnel and the strength and conditioning personnel and they want to get out there and go without a doubt, but we got to be smart and realize that we don't play today. Uh, we play on Saturday. <laughs> Yeah, Shane, how has um, Leggett turned himself into a more reliable, consistent performer out there? I think just work. You know, I know it's easy to say, but the guy works his tail off. And uh, he's just been very uh, driven and passionate about getting better. You know, he um, like the catch he made in the bowl game against Notre Dame for the touchdown. I mean, yes, that was a wow, freakish play, but it wasn't a surprise to me because I know – you know, Xavier's athleticism and strength and speed and all that. And I can remember last August, August of 2022, there was some NFL teams out there, scouts watching practice, and he made some catches. And I remember one pulling me aside saying, who the heck is that? You know, just because of his size and speed and physicality, he jumps out. And, uh, and, and we had some pretty good receivers that he was competing with last year as well with, you know, guys like Josh Van and Jalen that are gone uh as well so it was a deep receiver group in there last week or last year he's really worked hard to be more of a receiver this year along with a great special teams player and um you know he's just got a he's he's all i think 
I saw where DK was just in here and was talking about how he's always in the building, and he is. He's always up here, and he's got a great relationship with Spencer. And, you know, I think I told you guys maybe the other night or maybe it was on the radio show. I think it was on the radio show. If y'all were at Carolina Calls, you would have heard this. But, you know, I can remember early July, I mean, got players had some time off around the 4th, and I get a FaceTime from uh, Xavier Leggett over their break, and he's out in Arizona, and he and Debo Samuel are out there you know, throwing routes or just working out together uh, to, uh, in the summertime when he had time off, just stuff like that, just going the extra mile to be great. And it's a great, um, you know, we're two games in, we got a lot of football in front of us, but it's a great testament for all of our young guys just to see his work ethic and on offense and special teams and, and how it's uh, how it's paying off. Glad to know you avoided that glass the other night, you know, without yes, Ellis taking exactly. a shot for you at Carolina Calls. <laughs> See, Mike was there, so it's going the extra mile. Um, David was tweeting about it, so Emily was as well. So we just I need wasn't to in the front, though, as I'm usually, though, because of that glass, so <laughs> maybe I won't go back in the front. When speaking about the offensive lineman, you look at a guy like Tree, you look at a guy like Ba. Outside of experience and outside of gaining some confidence as a coach, now that you see them out there and you have some tape to evaluate, what is the luxury now moving forward with those guys? And what else do you think they gained from that opportunity the other night? Uh, getting out there and playing obviously is is huge for them. You know, the moment wasn't too big for them. Trees just a uh, trees got a big smile on his face, like no matter what's happening. You know, he could be getting beat by. 28, which I hope that's never happening, or, or winning by 28. And he's just got the same, like, happy smile on his face as well. But he is a mammoth guy with really great athleticism and um, will continue to get better. Tro was just a, a mauler in there. I mean, you hear coaches talk about guys having heavy hands, meaning, like, when they put their hands on you, you feel it. And Tro does uh, when he gets his hands on people also. He's got an, an edge to him also, you know, which I love. They, they came out there and, and played with with fight and competitive spirit, which was great to see. Uh, certainly they made a lot of uh, – they made mistakes, but uh, for to be in there a true freshman playing left tackle and playing, lo- playing guard, pretty impressive. And they will, um, they will continue to get better. And we know that the front, the defensive line they're going to be, they're going to face this week is different than what we saw last week, you know, against Furman. But just being able to get in there and get game action um, will, will do nothing but benefit them. Shane, you mentioned uh, Kirby's fixation, for lack of a better term, on special teams. And of course, you and your family have a certain reputation in that area. Kind of take us through what that was like, you know, in sessions with the two of you sitting down. Is it like brainstorming, or are you saying, "Well, you know, I I like this, and he likes this," or just kind of walk us through some of that? When I was working for Kirby, you're saying, "Yeah, um, you know, for one <clears throat> fortunate that he gave me an opportunity on his first staff. My dad retired at Virginia Tech, and I was looking for work, and and he was putting together his first staff and interviewed me for the job, and I've known Kirby since." early 2000s when we first got into coaching. We were GAs at, at the same time, different schools, and then both got our first full-time jobs in the SEC in the same year. He at LSU and me at Mississippi State. Uh, so I've known him for a long time and uh, fortunate that he gave me an opportunity on that first staff to coach tight ends and special teams. And it was, uh, you know, certainly kind of a combination of, you know, things that he wanted done that they had done at Alabama. But then it was also a combination of, you know, hired you, Shane, as the coordinator and, and run what you want to run. So it was great collaboration. I mean, I didn't do anything kind of like now with me and Pete. I mean, there was nothing I was doing without his approval and his say on it. Um, you know, a lot of head coaches are kind of like, you go do what you want. Just tell me what you're doing and I'll see you on the practice field. But, you know, not Kirby. He's got his hands in every aspect of that program, offense, defense, and special teams. So, you know, during the season, we would meet on – I would come up with a, my initial thoughts and and um, we would get together on Monday mornings, 10, 11 a.m., whatever it was, and sit in there for hour plus just kind of putting together the game plan as far as what we wanted to do special teams wise, but he had his hand in everything. And I would say there was collaboration. He was the head coach and I was going to do what he wanted to do. And, but I would, you know, he trusted me with putting the initial plan together as far as things that we would try and do each week. But then certainly there were some, I remember we were getting ready to play. I think it was Auburn. Um, on my second year there when we won the SEC championship and we were getting ready to play Auburn and whoever we played the week before, might have been South Carolina, we played them at home. 
Uh, we were ranked number one. Georgia was. We beat South Carolina at home. And then I think, like, literally as soon as the game's over, he came to me and said, you know, we're doing this next week against Auburn. When they punt, we're lining up like this. I want this to happen. Just make sure you get it coached up and ready to go for Monday. And it's like, okay, uh, as well. And he was right. You know, what we did was pretty good from a schematic scheme also. But he had an idea, going back to his time at Alabama, what he wanted. And then game day also, you know. Um, a lot of the stuff that we do in pregame staff meetings and things like that, talking through scenarios, I learned from him uh, during my time there. Yeah, um, taking me down a nightmare. It was the right thing. If you go to, uh, if you ask anybody in Athens what Tyler Simmons was on side means, they know. Because in the national championship game, uh, we had a Alabama punting. We kept, Kirby had come up with a plan that, you know, we're going to show this look when Alabama punts. We're confident that they will do this. And then when they do this, we're going to do that. And um, uh, Alabama's protection scheme, you know, we had a we, – we, we were going to get a free rusher, we felt like, and we did. Came completely clean, uh, blocked a punt, just like we had designed it to do. And unfortunately, the officiating crew, not an SEC crew, but the <laughs> officiating crew absolutely uh, blew the call. And I don't want to say cost us a national championship, but – that was a significant play in the game uh, that potentially cost us a national championship game that night because that was the same game that Tua threw the pass on second and 26. And overtime, and that block punt happens early in the second half, and there probably isn't an overtime. So I've gotten past it, as you could tell. So I'm, I'm, yeah, it doesn't bother me anymore. But that was one. That was Kirby. You know, we had a whole month to work on it, and, and he was exactly right what, um, what, we, were, what, we, needed to, what we needed to do. <laughs> um, I like it. So you let the veteran ask all as many questions as he wants as well. You're a Hall of Famer. Um, better, res better result. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the Auburn stuff that I was talking about, when you had really good players, I mean, you got to remember now when we had, we had a punt team where Nick Chubb, Sony Michelle, and Roquan Smith are members of our punt team. And we got a punt return team where – um, you know, Miko Hardman, who's still playing the NFL, Miko's our punt returner and kick returner. So when you got really good players, you're going to be really good in the kicking game. So I don't know if there's one play that just uh, that just stands out over the over the two years. There were some good ones. I mean, a punt return for a touchdown against I think Louisiana Lafayette, and had some long returns against Tennessee in 2017. Uh, Rose Bowl, we blocked a field goal in the second overtime in the Rose Bowl against Oklahoma that sent us to that national championship game. So there were a lot of impactful plays on special teams that, you know, Kirby is the head coach and we all had a hand in as well. And then they've continued to make them too. I love this, it. like a special teams press conference. Um, they continued to make them uh, every week on Mondays. You know, I'm watching offense, defense, and special teams, but I watch and like the very first thing I watch is like, you know, get the bad out of the way. It's all of the like, explosive plays that the offense has had for the other team. It's the sacks, turnovers that the defense has forced, and then it's all of the big time, big explosive plays that the special teams unit has had. So sitting there watching Georgia's special teams explosives for the last two or three years, I mean, it took forever to go through it just because they've made so many impactful plays because Kirby's involved, they got great players, and they're really well coached. Uh, Shane, you spoke a little bit on this before, but I guess what would you say from either your time on Kirby's staff or since then would be the biggest lesson or piece of advice that he gave you relevant to your coaching career? Um, great question. Um, there's a lot. I mean, there's – you know, what I've learned is I've taken from – Everywhere that I've been, I've taken something from that, whether it be Virginia Tech, Mississippi State, Oklahoma, Georgia, you name it, uh, as far as how we do things in our program. And I saw that from Kirby. Obviously, Kirby, when he got hired at, <clears throat> at, uh, at Georgia, had been pretty much with Nick Saban and that Alabama model for his entire career. So he had a blueprint of a foundation of what he wanted it to look like initially. 
when he came in because that's what he had been exposed to and here's how we're doing things. But from day one, the willingness and the ability to adapt and if there's a better way of doing things, show him, you know, go maybe special teams, a how you do things in practice or stuff like that, that that maybe we tweak that Alabama didn't do and offense and defense. He's just done a great job of continuing to evolve, in my opinion, stay ahead of things. Maybe there's a scheme that in one season offenses attack and, and hit some plays on will the very next season, very next week, whatever it might be, they're going to have it corrected and they're going to have an adjustment for it. So staying ahead of the game and um, and then certainly just the urgency that you got to have every single day in coaching and recruiting when you, uh, you know, when you stepped in that building, uh, there wasn't going to be a wasted moment. You were working, there was an urgency. Uh, the way you pra- the way they do things in practice, there's we're very similar in a lot of ways to how we practice here. So there, there's a lot of things to be honest with you. I mean, uh, when I got hired there, I had worked with some great coaches: Steve Spurrier, my dad, Philip Fulmer, George O'Leary, Sylvester Croom. But those two years were just extremely impactful for me, uh, growing as a coach. Just uh, you know, being around Kirby, he was a first time head coach, and being around him really helped me here when I became a first time head coach. Shane, Mario Anderson, um, besides running the ball, how has he come along blocking, protection, receiving, stuff like that? Pretty good. Uh, you know, he ran with a, a physicality on Saturday night, which we need. He's, he's really got, I think I've mentioned it before, but just contact balance and the ability to, you know, take a hit and, and stay on his feet and, and, and maintain balance. He's really got a, a good knack for that. So we know he runs hard, which we need that element in our offense. Uh, he's worked hard in pass pro. Uh, he's got he's a strong guy, and he's not overly big. So he's got that center of gravity and that base, which should help you in pass pro. So I've got no issues, you know, with him from a pass protection standpoint as he continues to work that technique. And and um, you know, I don't we don't have any concerns about him out of the backfield as well. He continues to to grow and get better and, and, and be comfortable and improve. You know, he was on our kickoff return team on the front line the first night against UNC, and then he was out there, you know, last week as well. And the first time against UNC was a little bit of a struggle, but Mario works really, really hard to uh, you give him something to focus on and improve on. He will do it, and he did that on kickoff return, and he continues to do that on, on uh, special teams also. Shane Boogie was in here talking about needing to make more maybe explosive or havoc plays defensively. Just from an overall unit, how would you assess the defense of the first two games and, and what's maybe next for them as they get into this SEC schedule? Yeah, I think they've been good. Um, um, I would agree with Boogie. We've got to be more disruptive up front, and, uh, and that's you know creating negative plays. Uh, we've talked about it before. It wasn't good enough offense or defense against UNC, and the discrepancy was the negative play differential between the two teams or between the two defenses, offenses. Uh, so we do need to be more disruptive. I feel like, you know, we've gotten some young guys in there that um, – talking about Tro and Tree on offense, the same thing defensively. I mean, you saw Desmond in there last week. You saw Xavier McLeod. You saw Pup. You saw Judge Collier. Jalen Kilgore is obviously starting for us right now, on and on and on. Um, with those young guys. So they're gaining experience. And so we, we've improved there. We, um, you know, we forced some turnovers against UNC. We've been good there. We've got to continue to force turnovers without a doubt uh, and limit explosives. But, you know, they've had a solid, solid two games. And uh, this will be the, you know, best offense we faced this season coming up on Saturday without a doubt, just because of their weapons everywhere. So we got a big challenge this week. But I know they're, are, they're, um, they're excited to get out there and perform. You, fool, you, you threw me with the new seat. Yeah, I wanted to come and sit beside my former intern, Summer, who's now oh, the uh, okay. weekend sports anchor at WCLC. like the, the Hall so. of Fame row back there. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, Shane, as a guy who grew up on the sideline at Virginia Tech and you were exposed to big-time games, rowdy atmospheres, what was it like for you the first time that you coached in an SEC game? What memories do you have or what impressions – did it leave on you? Mm, another good one. Um, trying to think. I guess the first. Yeah, the first time as a coach that I was ever in an SEC state SEC stadium was actually Athens. Uh, my it would have been two. 
My first year in coaching was 2000. I was a graduate assistant at Georgia Tech, and we played at Georgia uh, that year. And uh, so that was my first time coaching in an SEC stadium. And just what you would expect, you know, this is this is different than what I've been used to this season. Uh, whether it be Big East Conference when I was at Virginia Tech as a player or the ACC my first season at Georgia Tech, uh, it was different. Then I went to Tennessee the next year, and you're going into Neyland, Neyland State, excuse me, Neyland Stadium, and playing in all these SEC environments. So probably just you know that's what I love. I'm so grateful to be in this league, and there's a lot of reasons, but one of those is just the stadiums and the environments that you get to be a part of every single Saturday. Um, that's what I love about college football, just the pageantry and the 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 stadiums and the 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 you know it's eighty ninety thousand people and the cheerleaders and the bands and the pregame walks and whatever it might be it's just uh it's different in this league and it really is I've been in every conference and you know, for the most part and and there's nothing like the SEC and it's and there's a lot of reasons for that but the the fan bases and the pageantry on Saturdays stands out and I noticed that pretty quickly when I first got into coaching. Shane, without giving away any state secrets, how have you evaluated Georgia on film in their first two games, a couple of slow starts against UT Martin and Ball State? Yeah, um, you know, the one of the, I guess last week against Ball State, they, you know, went right down the field <clears throat> offensively and, and they're making plays and maybe got bogged down a couple times. But, you know, the thing that stands out to me is the defense is creating turnovers. You know, Ball State Saturday, Ball State's moving the ball somewhat decent, but then they – they, it's zero to zero. Uh, they throw a ball down the sideline. Guy for Ball State has a chance to make a play. He doesn't make the catch. The very next play, they punt. Georgia runs it back for a touchdown, seven nothing. You know, so special teams making an impact. And then the Ball State offense goes back out there, and two straight possessions, they have turnovers. And just like that, you know, you're down two or three scores. So that's what stands out to me is, is you see the weapons and, and the arsenal of people that they have on offense. That can uh, that can make plays, but then the defense and the special teams is just making just as many uh, impactful plays. So that's what stands out to me. And and uh, you know they're playing some young guys too, and you see those guys continuing to get better and more and more comfortable and confident each week. Kind of sticking with Georgia, when you're facing a quarterback like Beck who doesn't have a lot of tape, maybe compared to some of the other ones you evaluated last year, this year, how do you kind of go about that as a staff making a game plan for a quarterback who hasn't played a lot? Yeah, you look back. I mean, they're going to do what they do. Obviously, they have a new coordinator with Coach Bobo, but the system has stayed the same. Mike was there last year on the staff, so they're not going to like reinvent everything when they return the bulk of the offense. So certainly, uh, you study that quarterback and maybe things that throws that he makes that Stetson didn't or – uh, maybe concepts they've run a little bit more of the last two weeks, but it's a challenge because certainly, you know, they've had two blowout wins two weeks in a row, so they haven't had the, they haven't had to do much offensively from a schematic standpoint. So you know what their base stuff is, and you try and prepare for that. You look back at last year, the schemes they ran, the and the concepts and the run game and pass game, and you prepare for those. But then you also know that they've had a whole off season too. That they've sh there's some things that they haven't shown the first two games that we've got to be ready for and adjust to on Saturday also. Uh, with JT Gear and and Marky, I think you mentioned they're probable the other night. What, assuming they can go on Saturday, what can they help help you guys with uh, on both those lines of scrimmage? They um, they could certainly help. You know, JT just being a bigger body on the edge as well. You know, this is a a massive offensive line size wise, and and we need we need guys in there that um, can 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 hold their own, make plays, and be disruptive. And JT's a big, strong guy that, you know, could just add depth to that defensive line room edge to help us as well. Same thing with Marquis. Marquis is a really smart player. Marquis is a really talented player. I hate that he hasn't been able to play uh, this year, but just added depth, you know, along that offensive line. We're, uh, you know, certainly we're – banged up and our depth has taken a hit but then we're also young along with that depth so if we could get another guy in there just to to add to the depth uh, like Marquis e, uh, who's a really good player that would be awesome Shane uh, you know talking a lot about X uh Pete calls him easy rider because that scooter accident he had in 20 what do you remember about that week and about his development past that accident 
Not much, to be honest. I wish I had more for you. I remember it happening. I remember hearing what happened. Certainly, at first, you you know, hope and pray that everything is okay with him from a personal standpoint. And then it's, uh, you know, how's it going to affect his ability to practice and play uh, as well? But I just remember, you know, he was back in meetings fairly quickly, I guess, after the after the incident. And and um, it allowed Pete, now that everyone is okay, a, a fantastic uh, nickname uh, as well to go along with his other arsenal of fam- fantastic nicknames that he has for our guys. Y'all got to ask him because there's so many new ones that are fan- elite that y'all haven't even asked him about yet. So that may be tomorrow or whenever he's in here again. So you mentioned Xavier, but also we got to see Eddie Lewis play a little uh-huh. bit for the first time on Saturday. What does he bring that might be different to this receiving core that could benefit you guys against the secondary that Georgia brings? Yeah, he's uh, – one, he's played a lot of football. He's an older guy from his time uh, at Memphis, and he was very productive at Memphis. So the, just the experience. You know, our other freshman, Nick Harbert's a true freshman. Tyshawn's a true freshman. So you got a lot of new faces in there. Eddie's an older guy that has been in big environments, first of all. Second of all, he's um, he's just got a, a knack for, for getting open. He's got a, a – you know, a quickness and and a burst that some of those other guys maybe don't have as well. He plays in the slot for us, but then he also has the ability to play on the out, excuse me, on the outside also. So that would probably be the biggest thing, just a veteran guy with with experience and, and, uh, you know, has a skill set, just the short area quickness and and burst that uh, maybe some of those other guys don't have as much of. All right. Thank you all very much.